Could Ravens pull the ultimate okie doke on fans in the first round of the draft and select a safety? With the additions of both Keith Williams and T. Martin, could the Ravens switch from a run first team to an actual pass first offense? How far up in the draft can the Ravens possibly move by trading Orlando Brown Jr.? For the talk about, oh man. These and many, many more questions on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Ain't you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Graven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from subscribers, which is a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to based off of any NFL team. And we answer it in a video just like this. Now, if you want the opportunity to be part of NFL questions from subscribers, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. And we'll answer your question in a video just like this. Now, Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. I really appreciate y'all. I hope everything is going really, really, really good with y'all. Um, shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean, uh, the patrons. Um, thank you for supporting the channel. Uh, just that much more. Um, but we, we appreciate it. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your input on the questions, uh, giving your answers, uh, and being respectful to each other. I really appreciate that. So let's make today a great day. Don't let anybody kill your vibe, and let's just keep on doing our thing, man. Love y'all. Let's get into it. First question in this episode of NFL Questions from Subscribers. It actually came from my boy Nick Brick, um, but he intended it to be for the Get It Off Your Chest uh, series that we started. And I appreciate y'all because y'all really like, y'all came through for that a lot in a like a crazy, crazy way, but a respectful way, but a crazy way. But I appreciate y'all. Um, but he said, uh, I appreciate you for the content you put out. No, I appreciate you. He said, the Ravens are a unique team that doesn't operate like others, and the national media misses that constantly. Uh, that being said, I've been thinking about this, and after watching the film and hearing the Liars lunch today, I think we are taking the safety from TCU. Uh, we love Chuck Clark, but we know, one, if it's thrown to him, his, or if it's thrown to his man, it will be a reception, and number two, Deshaun Elliott should be the strong safety. Uh, Trevor Morig is a safety that can tackle, but he can also cover the entire field and actually take the football away. This will make me mad, but... <laughs> but I think uh, we need to mentally prepare for the Ravens to do what they do best and zig when we want them to zag. Worst part is that this guy is really, really, really good. Um, so, Nick Briggs said he could see the Ravens taking a safety uh, with their first pick. Now, um, that yeah, I think a lot of us could see that. Um, shout out to my guy, Joe Nubo. Well, formerly Joe Nubo. Uh, Jose V now, but um, he did a video talking about that exact thing, um, taking a safety with that early pick. And it is something that I know there will be a lot of Ravens fans that will be upset. Uh, there will be a lot of Ravens fans that will be frustrated because a lot of people want wide receiver first, a lot of people want O-line first, a lot of people even want edge first. Um, and, and people have, and it happens to everybody. It ain't happening to me this year because I'm like, whatever. But people, they fall in love with the pick who they want their team to get in this case being the Ravens so no matter what the Ravens take somebody's gonna be upset somebody's going to be upset but again something else you got to remember is that it's a seven round draft it's not just the first round and that's it it's seven rounds so even if the Ravens don't take even though uh, guys obviously again taken off the board so they won't be available anymore but even if the Ravens don't take whatever position you were looking for them to take in the first round doesn't mean they can't hit on it later on um so We'll just see what happens, man. Draft is right around the corner, and all of these questions that we have about the draft will be answered very, very, very soon. But as far as them taking a the safety, it is something, it is a position of need, because right now it's just Deshaun Elliott, one year left on his deal. Anthony Levine, he just signed a one-year deal. Chuck Clark, I think he got like two years left on his deal. Um, and that's it. So you don't have, oh, they got Jordan Richards. They brought him back too. Um, but so you... You don't really have depth for the future. You don't have your safety for the future. Well, you don't know. It could be Deshaun Elliott. That'd be nice if it is, if that works itself out. Um, but you just, there's a lot of unknown right now. So before you jump into the fire with this unknown, you can go ahead and take care of that by getting a safety early. Next question came from my boy John S. He says, so earlier I asked about Orlando Brown for DK Metcalf because Russell's going to need help, especially with J.J. Watt going to the Cardinals. You said in the fantasy world that that would be great, but you doubt they would be willing to give up their best wide receiver. Recently, it came out that the Giants are willing to trade back in the, in the draft for their 11th pick. So how about OBJ in the third for that 11th pick? That I would not be mad at at all. At all. Wouldn't be mad at it at all. 
again, y'all know I, I would rather us keep Orlando Brown Jr. But if they are going to trade him, that trade, no problem. Getting the eleven, like moving way up there. Even though you're giving him a third, okay, cool, yeah, whatever. No big deal. You got a third comp pick this year when David Cully got signed, so that would just kind of cancel that out. So, yeah, I, I would love that one. Next question came from my guy, Alex B. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and the fam are doing well. Uh, we're doing really good. I appreciate it. He said, my question is, will the Ravens decide to draft a receiver in the first two rounds of the upcoming draft after hearing EDC's interview on Monday when he said he was insulted by the critics and analysts saying that the Ravens don't have good receivers? Um, I, I think so. I think it definitely means uh, that EDC is going to be doing something about the wide receiver position, um, for sure. Because, and my uh, two people, shout out to uh, Spiritually Smart, who we did the video on that, explaining everything that that EDC presser really meant. And shout out to Nana as well. She, uh, she said that she spoke with somebody, and they, they let her know, like, hey, these, these pressers, they are called the Liars Luncheon for a reason. And anything that is said in public, anything that's said publicly by the Ravens is done so for a reason. And I said it in a video, too. They're not just going to sit up there with cameras on, knowing that this video is public. They're not just going to sit up there and be like, hey, this is what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. They're not going to tell their plans like that. So, yeah, I, I can see them taking a receiver early or still making a move for somebody. Next question came from my boy Brandon P. He said, I ain't graven. Hope all is well with you and the fam. Yes, everything really good, Brandon. He said, but I've been wondering something ever since we brought in the new passing coordinators and coaches. Um, do you think there's a possibility that with the new additions, our passing game will flip with our rushing attack and take over as our new offense and be more productive than our run game? No, I don't see that at all. I, I don't see that happening at all. I, I see them improving, but for, for the passing offense to be like number one for the Ravens, no. Uh-uh. That just, nope. Only way that I would see that happening to where the passing game become, becomes like the priority for the Ravens is if they got like an entirely new front office. And we know that's not happening. And I'm, not, and I'm not, not saying that I want them to do that. I'm saying that's the only way that I would be able to see it, that happening. Like if they had a new GM, a new coach, new even new quarterback, new just new everything. If they started this thing from the ground up. Because that's not what Ravens do. That's not their philosophy. They've never been a pass first. To, well, when Mark Tressman was here, they were trying to be pass first. And it was kind of ugly. But they've never really been a pass first team. So, no, I don't see that happening. Next question came from Erna S. Uh, Erna said, well, what do you think about the Ravens trading Orlando Brown Jr. for a next year's first round pick and a second round pick this year? This way, the Ravens have an extra two round pick to draft the center and wide receiver they need. And they add an extra first round pick to trade for a wide receiver or a pass rush in the season in this season or uh, next. I feel this is the way that the Ravens will have every possible way to have a deep playoff or a Super Bowl run. I know you're probably thinking, no, if the Ravens need to trade Orlando Brown and get picks this year and draft his replacement. But you have to have an insurance plan if that draft replacement doesn't pan out. So how about take the second, uh, go into the draft with three picks in the first two rounds and go into the season with another high value asset to improve your roster because of injury or a player becomes available. I know this is a lengthy one, but I'm praying you read it. I, I wouldn't go for that one, man. I, 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 would, I would not go for that. Um, to, to trade Orlando Brown Jr. and only get a first next year? No. That, that first needs to be this year, right here, right now. Yeah, you're getting a second now would be cool, too. But no, you first now. First now. Even if, like, I know your thing would be, you said second this year and then uh, first next year. But scrap the, second, scrap the second from this year and make it a first for, for this year. And don't even worry about that second. Get that first. So, no, I wouldn't be with that one. But then he said, adding on to that trade, I think the Ravens should take the best uh, available edge in the, late in the first round. Jalen Phillips and then take uh, Diami Brown and Creed Humphrey in the second. No, that would be with that bonus second round pick you were talking about. Um, and go into the third round, replacing Orlando Brown Jr. If you don't sign a replacement. And yes, two first round picks this year is great, but it's probably not going to happen. And keeping, uh, o o I, almost said Orland I almost said Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, keeping Orlando Brown Jr. is two, but he's going to leave after this year. So take a first next year and an extra second this year and draft three potential starters from the first two rounds of this year's draft. See, now when you, see, when you explain it like that, that does make it sound a little bit better. I still wouldn't do it, but it does make it sound a lot better, man. So I appreciate you uh, breaking that down like that. Uh, he said, plus the rest of your picks uh, usually... 
put usually put the best players uh, that are a go on day one and day two. Then you go into the offseason with your option open for multiple trades to upgrade your team because if your draft picks don't pan out this year or a player goes down, you need to have options to replace or upgrade positions because they're going to have multiple comp picks coming. So adding a first with that leaves zero excuses for the Ravens not to have options to upgrade. Uh, the team this upcoming season, uh, and hope you see this, have a blessed day. Oh, I appreciate that. Uh, you you definitely been doing some uh, some draft homework. Um, but yeah, I again to to trade Orlando Brown Jr. and the highest pick that you get is a first next year. That'd be nice because you have a first for the future. But nah, you need to get one now. Next question came from Teddy. He said, Engraven, why won't this front office give Lamar Jackson what he needs? Do they seriously think that Sammy miss a game for a sprained toenail Watkins is the help that he needs? Everyone and their mother knows that Orlando Brown Jr. wants to leave, and management said that they were willing to deal. Ravens fans should be pushing the front office to move up to the top ten and getting one of those uh, big four guys. This would force Roman to change the offense to get the receivers involved more. Uh, you can't trade Orlando Brown uh, and pick number 27 and another first round pick for a wide receiver and not use him. Blessings. Love it. Um, now, I get what you're saying uh, because I've said the same thing myself. Because there's a lot of people that are like, oh, if, if Ravens get a, a, a better receiver, it's not going to change much. No, yes, it would because they will be forced to. Because if Eric DaCosta was like, hey, I went out there and I got this receiver, y'all need to use him more. You, you have to use him more. They, they would have to. And not that the offense would completely change anything like that, but certainly they would find ways, they would be forced to find ways to get that guy involved. So getting a receiver could make a uh, big, big difference, especially if it's that big, big time, big, big name wide receiver. Next question came from Delaney G. Said, I ain't hope everything is well with Carter and your wife, but how, everything is good with us. I appreciate it. How do you feel about Nico Collins uh, and us drafting him to be that Miles Boykin replacement if Miles doesn't pan out? Because in 2022, it'll be his contract year. This would, of course, be in round two or round three. I want us to trade up and give Lamar weapons because we know or we don't know how truly good of a passer Lamar is. You see what Buffalo did with Josh Allen, and Josh Allen was a dynamic runner in 2019, but he was inaccurate. Uh, then they traded for Stephon Diggs. They got Gabriel Davis. Uh, and all I'm trying to say is if we get Lamar a Waddle or a Smith or if we trade up to the top 15, I believe Lamar will be extraordinary because he is already great depending on if t martin and keith williams give greg Ro give greg roman some tips on route concepts because his concepts are horrible lol sorry for the long question now it's all good um i i would me i would much rather get that proven guy um at at wide receiver but even with boykin like with, with boykin the coaching it it can possibly make a big big difference man it, there's that possibility that's there because I, for the talk about oh man, Ooh. but for the talk about replacing Miles Boykin, nah, I I I can't get behind that right now. Um, cause Miles Boykin, he still provides value to this team. And I, I think with Miles Boykin, to me, it seems like there's a, uh, it's a confidence thing right there. Now, if you get the right people in your ear, you get the right people around you, your confidence can go from zero to a hundred or maybe not even a hundred, but it can certainly take some significant, um, it, it can raise significantly. So with Miles Boykin, I think it's just it's a mix of opportunity and, and, and maybe with these new coaches, they can really help him take his game to another level. Uh, him and Lamar, they got to get on the same page. They got to get on it and just I feel like with Miles Boykin, there's just I, I, I hate always hearing the word potential with people. I hate hearing that with the Ravens a lot of times, especially at the wide receiver part, because we hear that word so much. We hear, oh, this guy's got potential. He got some potential, potential. And potential is nice, but we really want to see that potential be reached. We want to see it be reached. So with, with Boykin, I, I hope this is the year where we ain't just talking about potential. And so, no, I, I don't think the Ravens should replace him. I still think they should bring in another significant guy. And that could possibly take some snaps away from Boykin. Um, but I just, I, I, I really want to see him do well, man. Because he got everything that Ravens fans are looking for, man, in a wide receiver. He got it already. He's here. He's here. But we just, 
waiting on him to show it, man. Next question came from Dominic S. He said, Ain't Graven, hope everything's going well. Keep up the good work. Appreciate it, man. He said, My question is, with the Ravens looking to bring in former Steelers tackle uh, Alejandro Villanueva, could you see an Orlando Brown trade in the making? Certainly. Um, and we talked about that a lot in the uh, Orlando Brown, I mean, in the Andre, in the Alejandro Villanueva video. Um, but he said, my second question is, would you be shocked if the Ravens bring in another tackle on a visit, someone like Mitchell Schwartz? No, not at all. I don't think there would be any reason to be shocked because the Ravens, whether Orlando Brown stays or goes, and it's seeming more and more every day like he's going to leave, but whether he stays or goes, the Ravens still need some quality depth uh, at tackle, especially with Ronnie Stanley coming back from injury. So, one, you hope that he comes back 100% from injury. Then, two, you hope that his body responds good because this will be his first year. And they, they say sometimes it can take like a year for somebody to get all the way back to where they were previously after an ACL injury. So hopefully um, Ronnie Stanley can be back and be good to go this year and be like fully back. But that's just something that you got to think about, too. So depth is always a, a good thing. Next question came from my boy Israel. He said, what's up, Engraven? What's up, man? He said, uh, how would you feel if the Ravens selected Caleb Farley at 27? Farley has been uh, seen by some as Q, I was about to say QB1, as a cornerback one and a top five to ten talent when healthy. Oh, if, if, if we got to talk about that for a rookie, if we got... If we got to have that conversation for a rookie, the whole win healthy thing, no. No. Mm -mm. No. Because if, if, if they're already having that conversation from college, then NFL it just gets that much harder, that much more physical, that much tougher. So, nah, it, that's a no for me, man. He said he excels in cover one man scheme at the six two corner who ran a four two. Oh my gosh, he ran a four two, which he said he he said which he said was kind of disappointing. Ooh, well, high standards there, huh? He said he had surgery on his back early in the year, but it was something he played through without knowing last year. Farley could be the answer the Ravens need for speedy receivers like <laughs> Tyreek Hill. Even though the Ravens have holes in the roster, could you see them going best player available and picking Farley due to scheme fit? No, not if he has a, a bad injury history, no. Um, if, if, if his injury history is that bad, I would expect him to drop, man. Like the speed, but that speed raises him up because, you know, people love speed like me. Um, but that speed would just boost his stock a lot. Injury history would drop him, but speed would raise him. So maybe it would like meet somewhere in the middle. Um, but yeah, for Ravens, I, I, I would say no. Next question came from my boy, Jonathan D. Now, this was intended to be for the get it off your chest segment. And, and what we'll need to do is really get that thing more ordinary and, and regular and whatnot. So when we do that, we'll figure out how you all can send stuff in for that. Um, but anyway, he said, I'm tired of the Ravens not signing anyone because they worried about those picks. Sign A, B. And we missed out on Clowney. Our D-line is so dang old. <laughs> well, they are a little up there in the tooth, but now nah, they um, mm, they are they are a little older, They're a little older. And Clowney would have been cool for one year up to ten mil. That ain't too bad. Um, I honestly didn't even think that Clowney was gonna get double digits though. Uh, but yeah, I would be. Y'all know I'll be down for them signing AB. I don't think they'll do it at all, but I would be down for it. Um, cause he's still out there. Bucks don't seem like they doing anything with him. Um, so he's still a free agent. So only time will tell. Next question came from my boy Mike M. He said, hey, my name is Mike from Chicago, Illinois. Oh, that's where my wife and her family are from. Uh, she said, Ravens fan since 96. Uh, I would love to know how you feel about the whole Dez Bryant situation. Do you think we should try to reach out and sign him to another year and let him do what he does and practice and dominate? Or do you think we should just move on? Well, the Ravens have already just moved on. That they're done with Des Bryant. Des Bryant is not coming back. They're not re-signing him. They're not bringing him back. It, no, Des Bryant and the Ravens' relationship is all the way over, all the way over. There's no him coming back. There's no him returning. It's done. It's a wrap. Um, so I, I wish that they could have implemented some of the things that we did see from the practice film and whatnot. I wish we would have seen that more in games. That would have been nice, but we didn't. Uh, and Dez, he is uh, moving on to whatever's next for him, and so are the Ravens. Next question came from Maintain. He said, what's up, fam? Thanks for being the best coverage of the best NFL team. <laughs> if they were the best NFL team, then we'd be winning the Super Bowl. Anyway, um, <laughs> keep up the great work, and blessings to you and the Holy Engraving family uh, and subscribers. Appreciate that, man. 
Uh, I've been a fan of Lamar Jackson since early college days after eight touchdowns first half game had uh, popped up. My opinion is he's well on his way to being a Hall of Fame quarterback if healthy enough career, uh, career-wise, of course. Uh, Lamar has done nothing but overachieve. I can't believe sometimes the negative things I hear about him. Off the field, as one of the youngest QBs, he's still a stand-up guy in so many ways. All he does on the field is win, as well as any QBs in league history, and he's still only 24. Year one, Lamar overachieved, saved our season, and pushed us through the, to the postseason. Suddenly, a bad loss puts some kind of bad name on him in the media. True. Uh, year two, he's the MVP. Definitely overachievement. Yes, a bad playoff loss in which he should as a QB. I put blame on Lamar, but he didn't get ran over by Henry, too. We lost as a team. It happens. That team grinded, but 14-2 and two record made it seem like we blew everybody out that year, and we did not. We did have a lot of blowouts now, but, yeah, not everyone was a blowout. The Bills one wasn't a blowout. It should have been, but the rest were like, no, no, no. We got to make this a close one. Um, the... Uh, the 49ers, oh, that 49ers game. Who that 49ers game? That 49ers game, boy. Oof. Anyway, um, this past year, I fully believe we did get hurt more than most teams. All NFL rookies, we can say, was hurt by uh, no offseason. But not. But that happened to every team, though. None of the teams had the rookie offseason. So that was everybody. Uh, and he said, but not only rookies, second-year players, too. That's four wide receivers we asked to contribute with one player, Boykins, actually having one full offseason out of the four wide receivers. Hollywood, Duve, Boykins, and Prochet. Well, that's a really good point because Hollywood, last offseason, his rookie offseason, he didn't really have it because he was hurt. Wow, that is, um, and he was our best receiver. He's our best receiver. He didn't even have an offseason. Wow, you, ooh, okay, maintain. I, I like this one. Uh, but and he said, oh, he just said it. He, he said it right after. He said with Hollywood, he was never fully healthy his rookie year, and we are younger than most good teams as a whole. Also, uh, as a whole, we're overachieving. Scurry and his injury come and comeback is a big missing point as well from no off season. Was he ready, or did he just look like he was due to circumstances? Preseason uh, would have gone better, uh, or would have given us a better look at him because he was slow out the gate, uh, even before uh, the finger cut and bad snaps. Add Yonder's retirement along with Stanley's injury, then Boyle's injury. We also took the worst hit uh, from C-19 in so many ways. Still made the playoffs and beat ourselves a bit, uh, Then, but then we beat the Titans. Last offseason moves all predicted on the tight, all predicated on the Titans lost the year before. So we jumped the big hurdle and still got younger. Uh, this year's playoff game is not a big deal to me. Lamar uh, won an only red zone interception ever. And also, one and only touchdown return ever, and that's a 14-point turnaround alone. Uh, more like a basketball reference. Exact loss right there. Uh, let alone the bad center snaps again, which led to Lamar's injury. And we still gave back a, a backup QB multiple chances by only giving up 10 points to Josh Allen in the offense in Buffalo. My simple prediction, the Ravens Super Bowl win, oh, the Ravens win the Super Bowl this year. Uh, draft time is our time, and so are signings after. With our main growth is going to come from within... Uh, and that's why they don't really need to add much more. We already scoring 30 points a game uh, while going against the grain. This is our year. Peace and blessings to all, and thank you for your time. Oof. Okay, so maintains that the Ravens going to win the Super Bowl this year. Um, as of right now, I would disagree. Um, I said right now I feel like the ceiling for them is the AFC Championship game. Um, but, I mean, I, I hope to be wrong. I really do. I hope to be wrong. Uh, the Super Bowl would be great. That'd be nice. Be some, there'd be something different. We haven't had one of those in a little while. But I just, right now, I don't expect it. When If we're just being straight up, I don't. I hope, though, that they do get it, though. So I hope all this comes to fruition, man. The last question on this episode of questions from subscribers came from my boy Sean from East Bmore. Shout out to my guy, man, because he always bringing it. He said, uh, this is the last question before the draft. Uh, what's up in Graven? Hope all is well. Things are great, man. Hope everything is good with you. He said, let's keep it real. Let's wait till the coaches do what they have to do and then take it from there. Uh, the past is the past. The Ravens know that they can't develop wide receivers, so they hire two of the best coaches in the NFL at developing wide receivers. So let's see if they can develop what we have. As much as I believe they should, I do not believe the Ravens will draft a wide receiver in the first round. I believe the first round pick will be an offensive lineman or an edge rusher. With that being said, I hope that they don't shoot themselves in the foot with Lamar Jackson when it comes time to negotiate a deal by not surrounding him with the proper tools to succeed because I do not believe they tried their hardest, but I do believe they did not give up on the players uh, in position, and that speaks volumes by bringing those two coaches in here to work with them. That's a very good point. Um, however, as much as I believe in the Ravens draft process, 
putting a winning product on the field after after season until they take more shots like they like the shots they took with Hollywood. That's when I believe they really want to want to win a Super Bowl. Uh, but Ravens fans don't lose hope. They know what they're doing. So let's just believe in our team. Peace. Keep up the good work, fam. I'm out. Mm. So, yeah, interesting. He made some good points because uh, he said the Ravens, they, they seem to believe in their own guys with the coaching highest. With the Keith Williams and T. Martin and especially looking at their resume. Yeah, like you did say. Um, let's just let's let's see how it goes. Yeah, he said let's so let's see if they can develop what we have. Yeah, let's let's see about that. Let's see if they can really develop our own guys, if they can really just bring out the best in these guys, um, and just really really sort of change change the narrative. Well, I can't I mean I can't even really call it a narrative because usually when you say something is a narrative, um, it's usually a false narrative. Uh, whenever you hear that word, but just change the whole, change the Ravens' way, change their mo, change their philosophy, change change everything when it comes to the Ravens and wide receiver. Change it. This could be the opportunity. It really could. I mean, they already got turned down a couple times from different wide receivers. Got turned down from Juju. Got turned down from T.Y. Hilton. Those guys were like, no, we we going back to the crib, man. We're going back home. We ain't coming there. And with that, it, it shows like, okay, I mean, this is no secret. This is this is not anything new where wide receivers don't look at the Ravens and don't look at Baltimore like, oh, that's the place where I need to be. Um, this is no shock or anything like that. This is not a Lamar Jackson thing. This is happening even back in Flacco time too. Um, so this is just a, it's a Ravens thing. So. Uh, what my guy Sean, it sounds like he's speaking of is just the Ravens really changing uh, the philosophy um, and just really changing just the standard when it comes to their development of their own wide receivers. So let's hope that my guy is right and they can do just that.